Yo, 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 what up, what up, what up? This is Toby with the Line Security, and we are back with another lab from Cert Master Security Plus 701. In this lab here, we are going to be implementing firewall rules. Firewalls are known as our first line of defense in many organizations. We use this to block or allow traffic coming to or out of our network. All right, we're using this. You can use this on a network. You can have network firewalls. You can have host-based firewalls, but essentially they are filtering traffic coming to or leaving your network a host, right? That's either traffic coming in, we call that inbound, or traffic going out, we call that outbound. So let's go ahead and get right into it. Please feel free to go ahead and read through the scenario and get a better understanding of what we're about to get into. But we are just going to jump into it because what is a better way to learn besides just doing it? All right, let's get it, let's get it. So first things first, we're gonna go ahead and log into PC10, right? PC10, we're gonna test out some firewall connections. So I'm gonna log in. You know how to do it, right? You know the username, you know the password. We're logging in as Jamie. Sweet, so once we log in as Jamie, what we're gonna do is open up the command prompt. You can see those instructions right here. And we're gonna try to ping DC10 to see if that works. If you're not familiar with the ping command, right? As I'm opening up the command prompt, right? If you're not familiar with the ping command, the ping command is what we use to test connectivity, right? So I'm gonna open up the command prompt and we are gonna try to test connectivity to DC10. I'm just gonna use this shortcut right here and select that. That should go ahead and type in ping DC10. Let's test that connectivity, see if it works, right? And it is working. We can see DC10 responding to us. What is ping doing? What are we looking at? What the heck is this? But we're saying, hey, DC10, are you there? DC10 is responding back. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. Yes, I'm here. And on Windows, it usually do, does a, we usually get four replies back on Windows operating system. On Linux operating systems, this could be an unlimited amount of replies, right? But you can't limit that on Windows, I mean on Linux. All right, let's get right into it. So the ping is working, right? It's taking a little bit long for the last ping to come back, but that's okay. So sweet, let me go ahead and mark that. We were able to successfully ping DC10, which may or may not be good. It depends on your organization's SOPs, but we have been able to ping DC10. All right, so let's go to DC10 and see if we can ping PC10. All right, so we're gonna go to the DC10 machine and see if we can ping this machine that we're on right now. So we'll, we'll let that run. Hopefully that's finished by the time we get back. So I'm gonna go over to DC10 and you know the username, you know the password. We're gonna go ahead and open this up with control alt delete, use this password. Bada bing, bada boom. Server manager is gonna pop up. So what am I gonna do? And what are you gonna do? We're just gonna minimize that, right? And we're gonna open up the command prompt again here. If you're not familiar with how to open up the command prompt, I believe they have some hints inside of this, all right? But simp you're simply gonna go over to the start button, type CMD, and bang, hit enter. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and ping PC10. Let's see if that works. Hit enter, and it's not working, right? We're not able to ping PC10. Why is that? That's because PC10 has a firewall rule that is more than likely blocking pings, you can see. We're saying, hey, PC10, are you online? PC10 says, leave me alone, leave me alone, leave me alone, right? It's not literally saying leave me alone, but it is saying what the firewall is doing is blocking our ping requests from reaching DC, PC10. It's from reaching PC10. All right, so let me go ahead and mark our progress. So what we're gonna do is block, because we were able to ping dc10 right this machine that we're on right now we were able to ping dc10 from the machine we were on earlier which was pc10 right we were able to successfully ping dc10 we are going to block that the way we're going to block that is by using our firewall so we're going to open up the firewall and block ping requests that are coming to dc10 here are the instructions right here, but hey, we're just gonna run right into it. If we run into mistakes, that's pretty cool. We get to learn from it. So how do we open up the firewall? We're gonna hit this start button, type firewall. You see Windows Defender Firewall, hit enter. Sweet, All right? Now let's go over to the advanced settings. We're gonna hit advanced settings and we're gonna select inbound rules because we wanna block attempts coming to this machine. So we're gonna block inbound connections, not all inbound connections, specifically this right here, ICMP request. OK, 
Okay, so we're gonna scroll down a bit until we see file and printer, and this is in alphabetical order, which makes it a bit easier to find. So we're gonna look for a file and printer ICMP. You probably saw it before I have, I think this is it over here. Let me expand this. And here we go, we're gonna block both of these right here, ICMP v4 and v6. We're gonna block ICMP. What the heck is ICMP? That is the protocol ping uses to reach out to people, right? That is the protocol ping is using to try to test connectivity, right? There are a bunch of different protocols. We have TCP, UDP, there are other ones, but ping itself uses ICMP. So how do we block it? We're gonna right click this, select properties, and we're just gonna hit block the connection. Too easy. We're gonna do that again for, for this one here. We're gonna right click, select properties, select block the connection. Too easy. Now, let's see if that works. We're gonna log back into PC10. I'm not going to put this firewall down because we're still gonna be using it. Let's log back into PC10. I'm gonna cancel this out. To, to cancel it, you're just gonna hit Control C, uh, but it, it did successfully finish. But I'm gonna cancel that out. I'm gonna type in CLS to clear my screen, and I'm going to try and ping DC10 one more time. This should not work if we successfully set up those firewall rules. As you can see, it's not working. The fire, DC10 is saying, leave me alone, right? Not literally, but hey, it's not able to, we are not able to ping DC10 from PC10, right? It sounds really confusing. PC10, DC10, PC10, DC10, DC10, PC10. Really confusing, but you get the point. Our firewall rules were successful. We're not able to ping DC10 anymore. All right, so let's mark our progress. Now, the question over here, what aspect of firewall rule manipulation within Windows Defender Firewall is most effective at stopping unwanted communication? Too easy. Defining a deny rule, okay? We want to define that deny rule, right? The deny rule is stopping the connection. That's the block connection that we enable. All right, too easy, let's go to the next section. All right, so we're still on PC10. So what do they want us to do? Sweet, we're gonna use, we're still going to be utilizing the firewall, but this time instead of blocking ping requests, we're going to block file access, right? File access, so let's just take a look at it. So we're gonna go ahead and provide access to this folder called lab files. How the heck do you do that? Just open up your Windows Explorer right here, this folder icon, we're gonna open that up. And there are multiple ways you can get to this lab files. You see it right here in the frequent folders. You see it right here in the quick access. It doesn't matter which one you click. I'm just gonna click one of them. And I'm going to back up a folder because I want to be under the C drive, right? I want to see the lab files folder right in front of me. I'm gonna right click on lab files, okay? And then I'm gonna go to properties. And now I'm gonna to go to sharing, right? This sharing tab right here, and I'm gonna select advanced sharing. And from here, I'm simply gonna select share this folder. Too easy, select okay. And you can go ahead and close this. Let me track my connection, I mean my, my status. All right, sweet. Let's go back to DC10 and try to access this lab files folder. So we're gonna go back to DC10 I'm gonna minimize this firewall. I'm gonna minimize this. I'm gonna minimize this command prompt. And I'm going to open up the file explorer, right? This folder icon down here. And now we're gonna to try to access that lab files folder that is on PC10, right? It's on the other machine that we just allowed access to the lab files. So we're gonna to try to access that. How do you do that? Forward slash forward, or that's a, is that a backward slash or forward slash? I think that's a, let me see. Yeah, backwards. I don't know. It's one of them, right? So we're gonna hit slash slash and then PC10, right? That should allow us to access files and folders on PC10. And you can see the lab files folder right here. If you click it, open it up, we can see everything that is inside of this, right? And if we go back to PC10, you don't have to do this, but I just wanna prove that we're looking at lab files on PC10. If I go back to PC10 and I go into the lab files, you can see the same thing, all right? So let me go back to DC10. All right, so on DC10, we were able to successfully access this lab files. We gave access 
we allowed other computers to access the lab files folder on PC10, P as in Papa. Okay, now, question, what is the name of the first folder in the lab files? That is contains nothing. So I'm gonna go ahead, contains nothing. Make sure you spell that right. And boom, we got it right. All right, so now what are we gonna do? We're going to block that access. We allowed it, we enabled it, now we're going to block it, but we're going to do this using the firewall. So let's go back to PC10. All right, now we're on PC10. I'm going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize this, and I'm going to open up the firewall. We know how to do that. You hit the start button and you type firewall. Too easy. Now, while this is going to pop up, we're going to go back to advanced settings. Same thing. And under advanced setting, we're going to go to inbound rules because we want to filter traffic coming inbound and we specifically want to block file access right so we're going to disable file and printer sharing right via smb because in order to here let me let me break something down real quick in order to access this lab files the way we did it from dc10 we use the protocol called smb Right. In order to do this, if we wanted to access DC 10, you're using a protocol called SMB to access files and folders this way. Right. So we're going to block file and printer sharing that's using SMB. So I'm going to scroll down and we see file and printer sharing using SMB. There are two of them. So we're going to block both of them. I'm going to right click the first one, go to properties, make sure this is enabled. And we're going to select block the connection. We're going to do this on the second one, too. We're just going to select enable and we're going to select block the connection. So I'm going to go to the second one. I'm going to right click it. I'm going to go to properties and I'm going to it's already enabled, but we're going to block it. We don't want anyone to access this lab files folder. We've already successfully accessed it, but now we're going to block it using the firewall. Too easy. Now you can see it's both blocked. You see the block icon. Pretty cool. All right, track our progress, make sure we're good, make sure we're good. All right, so we're going to go back to DC10, right? Real quick, we just blocked file and printer sharing. We just blocked SMB access to files and folders on PC10. Let's test it out. We're going to go to DC10, and I'm just going to close this out, and we're going to try to access it again. I'm going to go to the files and folder icon right here. I'm gonna click lab files right here. Oh, no, 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 sorry, scratch that. We're gonna try to access the lab files on PC10. So we're going to go ahead and type this in the search bar. And it's stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling, it's stalling. It's not, it's not going through. It's not going through, it's not going through, it's not going through, right? This might take a few seconds. Why is it not going through? Because we just blocked it. We just blocked it at the firewall. We just went into the firewall on PC10 and we blocked file and, sh and printer sharing via SMB. So this shouldn't work. Right, we'll let this run for a few seconds just to see the error message that we get, but it shouldn't work. All right, and if you need some assistance on what we just did, just go ahead and expand this and, and it'll take you through the same steps that we just went through. All right, now let's go ahead and wrap up with our comprehensive questions. Oh, look at that. Windows cannot access PC10, right? It would have been crazy if we could have accessed it after blocking it at the firewall, right? But we can't. Why? Because firewalls work when you use the rules, implement the rules the right way. So comprehensive questions. The first one, if a firewall rule is disabled, but the associated communication is still able to occur, what is the reason for this issue? One or more other rules must be allowing the communication. Cool. What term refers to a firewall rule that is specifically defined? What term refers to a firewall rule that is specifically defined that is going to be explicit right explicit means that the firewall is ex is specifically defined what firewall rule is applied when no other rule matches a communication that is going to be the implicit firewall rule okay implicit okay that's like an imaginary rule 
What should drive or define the firewall rules implemented by an organization? Baseline configurations, okay? Your baseline configurations should define your firewall rules. The primary type of benefit provided by a firewall rule is what? They are preventive, right? They are physical, well, not physically, but they are preventing things. It's logical. They are preventing things. They're not fixing anything such as corrective. They're not simply detecting anything. They're not psychologically deterring anything. They are preventing things from happening. And that is it. Hey, y'all, if you've enjoyed these videos, please do me a favor, smash the like button, leave a comment. If you have questions, drop them in the comment section. We do our best to answer and respond to every single comment. Also, if you're studying for the Security Plus, it would behoove you if you went to olinesecurity.com and signed up for our next Security Fundamentals Academy. We break everything down in regards to Security Plus and we take it a step further by giving you hands-on skills that recruiters are looking for to solve real world problems. And guess what? We help you with job placement at the same time. The job placement, the career development, the resume critiques, the one-on-one -on -one interview critiquing, that is available to all of our security fundamental students for as long as they need it. I will see you all in the next video. Peace.